Broadcasting Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Diamond Detective Agency, a corpse in every plot. Oh, Rick, that's awful. I know, Helen, but my sense of humor is out of gas. Oh, what's the matter? No business? Not for a week. If a client walked in now, I'd probably swear it was an hallucination and referred to Bellevue. Well, I've been trying to get you. He called here about five minutes ago, said it was important. I just got in the office. I'll give him a call. Am I going to see you tonight? You know it. Me and my empty wallet will be glad to stop over for dinner. Well, I'll have Francis fix something healthy. Tell him to cook some money. (laughs) I'll see you around seven, then. Don't forget to call Walt. Bye. Bye. And I wish I was smiling, sure it's fine, I'm on in Lieutenant Levinson, homicide. Oh, you want to talk to me, Fatty? Rick? How many people called you Fatty? Where the devil have you been? I called you at your apartment all morning. Uh, Helen just told me I slept late. Well, why didn't you answer your phone? Rent was due. Could have been a trap. Can you come down here? Well, if it's important, I can come down. But if a potential client gives up because he can't find me, I may have a crying jag all over your office. I'll stock up on hankies. I wouldn't ask you, Rick, but it is important, very. Well, don't sound like the last course of gloomy Sunday. I'll be there. Relax. I knew Walt was on the level because every time he thought something was important, he came on in a higher register and began to sound like a harp. Well, I closed the office, set the bear trap in front of the door in case of a client, and left a box lunch. I might be gone for a good while this time, and if I caught something, there was no sense to let it starve. The fifth precinct was 20 blocks away, so being a practical man who always regards that lonely feeling in his pocket as the sure makings of a pedestrian, I insulted a few well-meaning cab drivers, and 30 minutes later, I limped into the squad room of the fifth precinct police station. Yes? Is there something I can do for you? In my business, you have to be conditioned to anything. Nothing should surprise you. But in my business, like any other, there's always a first time for everything. And it looked like this was it. For over a year, I had been walking leisurely into the squad room of the 5th Precinct and smiling inside when I spotted a cop with a battering ram for a head and landing barges for feet. He was always the best straight man I'd ever run across, and his name was Sergeant Otis Lovelune. But this day, dear old Otis was not to be found. Instead, sitting at his desk, looking up at me through a pair of thick horn-rimmed glasses, was something else. It pulled out a clean white handkerchief, removed the glasses, clouded them up with a quick breath that filled the room with the essence of sen-sen, and said, Well, where's Otis? You mean Sergeant Loveloon? He's been transferred. He's been what? Transferred. Who are you? Sergeant Andre Klum. Is there something I can do for you? Andre Klum? Sergeant Andre Klum. Sergeant Andre Klum. Uh, just one moment. Yeah? Where do you think you're going? Uh, look, uh, uh, Sonny, I'm going in to see the lieutenant. You'll have to wait until I find out if he can see you. Oh, he'll see me. He just called me. May I have your name, please? What? Citation. Mr. or Mrs. Hey, this may not be so bad after all. No? No. We're going to have fun, Andre. Are we? Yes, indeed. Now, call in to the lieutenant and tell him Mr. Diamond is coming in to see him. Yeah? The gentleman you were expecting, Mr. Diamond. He's getting introductions now? Send him in. Yes, sir. The lieutenant will see you, Mr. Diamond. Thank you, Sergeant Klum. And uh, something else, Mr. Diamond. Yes? Sergeant Loveloon warned me about you. And I can assure you right now that I have no intention of becoming the brunt of your obvious crude comedy. Sergeant Klum, I don't think there's much you can do about it. Oh, Walt, I want to go on record right now as saying don't. that Don't. I... I know. Well, what is that out there? The commissioner says he's one of the most valuable men on the force. But how could you put him in a cop's uniform? It's like dressing Rasputin and the Mother Hubbard. I miss Otis as much as you do, but strictly off the record... 
Sergeant Clume has relatives. Oh, I thought so. Been scratching all the way in here. Otis moved over to the 11th Precinct. Well, who's he working for now? Lieutenant Crawford. They've had a suicide watch on him all night. What's this Andre Clume supposed to be so good at? He's only been with us for a couple of days. I don't know. Well, if I keep thinking about him, I may have to be dipped in hot tar. You better tell me what you want to see me about. You may not like it, Rick. Oh? This is new? Remember Ralph Baxter? Sure. I sent him up while I was still on the force. Yeah. Well, you worked on that case for over a year, didn't you? You were in charge of the department. You know darn well I did. Rick, you knew Baxter's habits better than anyone on the force. Oh, now, Walt, Walt, what's it all, what's it all about? Is uh, Baxter loose? Very loose. Busted out at 8 o'clock this morning along with seven other guys. Oh. All got away clean? Every one of them. One of the best planned breaks I've ever heard about. Well, if Baxter was in on it, it had to be. He's a smart boy, Walt. One of the smartest. Yeah, well, the commissioner says we've got to pick him up before he does any damage. Just like that, huh? Just like that. I need someone who knows him so well he might have a chance of nailing him before the trouble breaks loose. And you know Baxter and trouble. How come you're in on this, Walt? Somebody already get killed? Truck driver. Oh. Baxter's an unhappy boy. He kills to make up for it. Really does a fancy job. You want to help me out? You're in trouble if they don't nail Baxter in a hurry? The commissioner is uh, relying on me. Okay, then. It's got to be official in case you have to make an arrest. Oh, now, wait a minute. Got to swear you in as a deputy. Uh Uh-uh. Look, Rick, we've got to. I don't really care how you bring Baxter in and who gets the credit, but But what what would the the commissioner commissioner say say if... uh... uh, Yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry, Walt. Every time I used to put on that badge, a book of rules and regulations went with it. I do it my way or not at all. But, but... Now, don't start running your motor. I don't want the credit. The department can have it. Besides, it's 20 to 1 in any man's book that I'll never even get close to Baxter. Well, you stand more chance than anyone else. Okay, then. You still don't have to worry about the credit. It's 50 to 1 that the newspapers will read. Private detective found with his head missing. Okay, Rick. Your way. Andre. Yes, Lieutenant? Andre. Yeah, some name. I beg your pardon? Uh, Bring in all the information on Baxter and the seven other men who were in on the break. Yes, sir. Andre. Andre Klum. Yeah. Yeah, you are, Lieutenant. You want to look over this stuff, Rick? Yeah. I want to know how, how the brake was pulled off. Maybe if we can get a line on who helped them, we can get it back to that way. A truck was used. Hmm. A Ford pickup that hauled garbage regularly. The large garbage cans were placed on the truck and taken off to a dump. The seven men in Baxter hid in the cans and were covered up with garbage. Oh. The men in the prison kitchen have all been questioned, but none will admit a thing. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Maybe you can tell us what happened after that, Sergeant. Several miles outside of the prison, the men got out of the cans. One man climbed up into the cab of the truck and ordered the driver to stop. He shot the driver, and the men climbed off the truck, rolled it over a 44-foot hill. 44 feet? 44 feet, 9 inches, at the first point of impact where the truck went over. The hill, of course, varies at other spots. Of course. Two cars were waiting for the eight men. Tire tracks were found and casts made. A report on these casts should be in at any minute. Synchronize your watches, then, Rick. Tell me, Sergeant Clume, have you any idea who might have been driving the two cars? No. Turning your MIGs and your ray gun, you're through. Very amusing. Now, please, Rick, for the sake of my psychiatrist, don't start on Clume like you did on Otis. Might be a woman. Clume? Driving one of the cars. Oh. Baxter was a known woman hater. You don't say. I suppose the other seven guys got together with him and formed a club. Four of the seven men were known to have had women friends at one time or another. But only one woman remained loyal after the men were sent to prison. How do you know that? I remember things. He remembers things. Oh. She visited the prison many times to see Tony Leggetti, one of the escapees. Maybe you can remember the dates? The first time was right after Tony was sent up. Uh, November... All right, all right, Sergeant. Uh, what's the girl's name and uh, where does she live? Jean Lawrence, 1782 East 12th Street, Apartment C. Uh, no, B. Butterfingers. I'll take this list of histories on the seven guys. You going to check on the girl? Yes, and... Uh... Thank you, Sergeant Andre Clume. You've been a brick. I left Clume polishing his glasses, Walt looking sick. Dean Lawrence did live at 1782 East 12th, Apartment B. So I looked up the landlady, a nice old reproduction of Worcester's mother with a hangover, Mrs. Shook by name. She was a little unhappy that I'd bothered her, but I finally sold her on the idea that she could shave any time, and aided by my best smile and the promise of a fast fifth, I finally got her to open the door to apartment B. There you are, lover. But I can tell you right now, Jeannie ain't in. Mm. Well, what's in this room? Bedroom. 
she didn't come home all day yesterday or last night. She didn't, huh? You know, I shouldn't be showing you around like this. <laughs> Except that you look like a real nice fella. And you're thirsty. Oh, go on. You see anyone else hanging around, say, in the last week? Yeah. Come to think of it, about a week ago, some dark fella started coming over to see Jeannie. Used too much hair oil. Greasy type. Think you'd recognize him? Hmm. You bring me that present, lover boy, and I could recognize a clove of garlic in an onion warehouse. <laughs> I'd make a book on it. May I use the phone? Go right ahead, lover. Oh, uh, by the by, hundred proof, huh? Hundred proof. Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson. Walt, well, this is Rick. I'm up at the girl's apartment. Not here. But the landlady says she can identify some guy who's been hanging around here for the last week. So look up... Oh, the... hold it a minute, Rick. Something coming over the hot shot. Okay. Oh, uh, bottle and bond, is that right, dear? Oh, lovely, lovely. Mm, lovely. Rick? Yeah? Get that landlady in here, then meet me out at the end of River Street, Pier 14. Something up? Sus came up. Someone didn't want it to. When she hit bottom, the bricks in the sack must have torn it open. What? A dock worker spotted her floating near one of the pier pilings. Jean Lawrence? Yeah. I'll see you over there. Something happened to little Jeannie. I could hear... Found what... her floating in the river. Oh. Well, if we're going down to the station, can we stop off and get that present? Yeah. Bottled in bond, you promised. I grabbed the cab and took Mother McCray over to the 5th precinct, making one stop on the way for the promised present. I turned her over to the desk sergeant and took off for Pier 14 at the end of River Street. When I got there, I spotted the homicide prowl car and Walt standing near the ambulance. On the wooden floor of the pier, covered with a sheet, was the dead body of Gene Lawrence. The coroner had just finished his examination. Well, give me a full report as soon as I get to the lab, Lieutenant. Well, this is a rush, coroner. It always is. Oh, hello, Rick. Hi, Charlie. Shot twice, then thrown in the drink. Yeah, nice, nice. Anything else? Book of matches in the coat pocket. Probably don't mean a thing. Lieutenant, we just got a report from the precinct. Hello, Diamond. Oh, good afternoon, Clum. You're looking fine. Oh, you'll be kissing each other on the cheek in a minute. Well, what about that report, Sergeant? The landlady Diamond brought in 22 minutes ago has just identified a picture in the morgue as a man who had been visiting Jean Lawrence for the past week. Anyone we know? William Nash, alias William Barnes, uh, alias Bootleg Barnes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, five feet 11, black hair, brown eyes, slight scar. Oh, whoa, uh, oh, oh, hold it. What about his record? Uh, nine arrests, two convictions, robbery and assault. In the cafe business now at... Uh, Red Dot Inn? Yes, sir. Matches you found on the girl, Walt? Yeah, Red Dot Inn. Let's take a run over there. Yes, gents, what'll it be? William Nash, you around? No. Police. He still ain't around. You got an office? Well, I... Uh... He got an office. Yeah. Where is it? Top of those stairs. Down the hall, last door. Go around to the back of the bar, Clum. Yes, sir. Hey, now, wait a minute. You ain't supposed to come back here. See that he doesn't have any way to let Mr. Nash know we're coming up. Just go ahead and tend your bar. You guys want to get me in trouble? Not unless Nash is really in his office. Then you don't have to worry about trouble. You're in it. Let's go, Rick. Down the hall, he said. Last door. We both go? Yep. Fire escape down there. This way, Sergeant Clum covers him. Can uh, Clum shoot? I forgot to ask him. You get on there by the fire escape in case he gets past me. Who is it? Fire department. What? Yeah, we received a report that your cafe isn't properly equipped in case of fire. Are you nuts? I just had no extinguisher. William equipment. Nash? Yeah. Now, what the Let's devil... go. Huh? You heard him. Hey, what is this? Police, let's go. He's clean. All right, copy. You want to haul me in. What's the charge? Murder. Murder? Now, listen, Start you Start walking. Who's murder? Gene Lawrence. Down the steps. I don't know any Gene Lawrence. Sure, sure. Everything all right, Lieutenant? Go upstairs and watch this guy's office. Yes, sir. You need a warrant for this, you know. I'll get one. I tell you, I don't know any Gene Lawrence. My friend, I know a little old lady who thinks you wear too much hair oil. She's going to make a very big liar out of you. NBC 
NBC is bringing you Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. All right, Sergeant, get the lineup going. Yes, sir. Henry Phipps. Henry Phipps, alias Henry Phipps. I've never alias seen Henry a lineup Phipps. before, lover. The man you identified earlier from the picture. See if you can pick him out. George Chalmers. No, ain't him. George Chalmers, alias George Lippert, alias Geo the Lip, George Petty. Ain't him, neither. William Nash. William Nash. That's him. William Barnes. All right, hold him. You sure that's a man who was calling on Gene Lawrence? Yep, that's him. Why don't he use bay rum on his hair? Nash. Yeah? Yes, Lieutenant. Yeah, Lieutenant. You know Miss Gene Lawrence? I told you I don't, Lieutenant. He sure is a lousy liar. All right, run him off. Step down. Hal Ennis. He killed Jeannie. We don't know. Yes, sir. He sure should use bay rum. Well, Walt and I and a couple of the boys took Nash downstairs and worked on her for about a half an hour before I got tired and decided to see what I could turn up myself. Nash still wouldn't admit he knew the dead girl, and we still weren't any closer to finding Ralph Baxter. I was pretty sure that Nash was connected with Baxter in some way, or he would have admitted knowing the girl and denied the killing. So I went back to the Red Dot Inn with a warrant to search Nash's office. Sergeant Andre Klum was guarding the door in the best prescribed manner. Legs spread, arms folded, back straight against the door. You're flat. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, oh, Diamond. Uh, I have absolutely no excuse. I, I'll understand if you report me to the lieutenant. Uh, no one could get by, could they? Not without waking me. Mm, then you did what you told to. You guarded the place. But there is no excuse for falling asleep on duty. Unless you get tired. Now forget it. I got a warrant here. Let's give this officer going over. And that's exactly what we did. We took the place apart, piece by piece. And I have to go on record by saying that Klum really knew his business. He didn't miss a thing. This might be important, Diamond. What is it? Bills to William Nash from the garage. Let me see. Mm. Nick's Garage, 13th Street. 1,000-mile service on both cars, 1490. Parking space rental on both cars, $25. Two cars. Mm, May not mean a thing. I'll check it anyway. Two cars were used in the escape, Diamond. Now, don't get excited. You stay here. I'll call you from the garage. I left Klum and went over to Nick's garage, looked up the owner, and he showed me the two cars, both sedans. 48 Chrysler and a new Hudson. Nick told me that both cars had been taken out the night before and returned early that morning. He said that Nash had driven one and the girl the other. So I put in a call to the Red Dot Inn and Sergeant Clune. Yes, the lab has two good casts of the tire prints. Well, put in a call to the lieutenant and tell him to get right down here with him. I hope you'll forgive me uh, being a little premature, but... You uh, already told him to come down. uh, Yes. Hmm. Tell me, Sergeant, you don't know anything about the fifth at higher layer, do you? One by uh, step up in one Uh, and... Goodbye, Sergeant. Well, this is Nick Miller. Runs a garage. Hi, Lieutenant. Miller. How about the cars? Uh, this one and uh, that one. Hold this cast. I'll try the other one. Okay. Fit? No. Those tread prints on that cast supposed to fit the treads on one of these cars? We hope so. How about that one, Walt? Like a glove. Try your cast on that car. Uh-uh. Fits this one, Walt. Rick, both of the cars were used in the getaway. What happens now? Go back to headquarters and tell Nash we got him dead to rights. We'll sweat him till he cracks. I got a better idea. Turn him loose. What? Nash knows that it's only a matter of time until we turn up his evidence anyway. And he knows something else. He knows Ralph Baxter. He knows if he spills anything, Baxter will kill him, sure. But we'll promise him protection. Against Baxter? Baxter would get him if it took ten years. Not if we get Baxter first. Nash probably knows where he's hiding out. Walt, even if Nash knows where Baxter is, he'll be a long time telling you. In the meantime, Baxter can cause a lot of trouble. All right, so I let Nash go. So what? Get a hold of the newspapers. Tell them to run a story that you've picked up Nash for questioning in the prison break. But that you had to release him because of insufficient evidence. You think Baxter will go after him? Well, he'd at least send some of his boys. 
I think the girl was knocked off because she got out of line. You can bet that Baxter won't want Nash around for a witness. Okay. Gee, you're kind of making Mr. Nash a sitting duck, ain't you? Oh, I guess you'd say that, Mr. Miller. Now, why don't you come on down to the station with us and answer a few routine questions? Uh, hey, I don't know nothing about this. That's what Mr. Nash said, but you can see what a liar he turned out to be. We went back to the precinct that the garage owner was held for questioning. In the meantime, two men were sent to the home of William Nash and the phone tapped. Two other men took their places on a stakeout at the Red Dot Inn, another pair at the garage. The garage owner was cleared of any suspicion and told to go back to work, but warned not to say anything. About four in the afternoon, a call came over the hot shot at the 5th Precinct. My name is Barton. I've just been robbed. Where are you calling from? I own the Rome Jewelry Store. Three men came in and tied us all up. They stole over $100,000 in gems. Anyone hurt? My clerk. He's still unconscious. All right. What's the address? Uh, corner of Wilmot and 21st Street. It looked like just a routine robbery at the time, so the robbery detail took over. Walt released Nash and called the papers. Around 4.30, Walt got a call from robbery. Levinson. Jennings, Walt. Those guys are held at the jewelry store over on Wilmot Street. The owner just identified one of the holdup men, Tony Lugetti. Oh, thanks. Rick, Tony Lugetti, one of the guys that busted out with Baxter, has been identified as one of the holdup men in the jewelry store. Now it starts. The gang had gotten away clean. No trace, except a cab driver who spotted a green sedan in front of the jewelry store. Three men in it. We waited. Levinson. Sullivan. Nash just got a phone call. Man said he wanted to see him for the payoff. Said to meet him at the place, Nash left the house, Fisher's tailing him. Right. Nash just left the house, got a call. Let's go. We piled into the squad car and headed across town in the direction of Nash's house. A newsboy on the corner yelled the planted news of Nash's arrest, and the car radio told us what Nash was doing. Suspect just went into garage. We're parked across the street. Instructions. I'm about two blocks away. If he gets in his car, let me know. He's coming out, turning north on Chestnut. See him? There he is, Walt. We've got him, Jennings. We'll tail him. We followed Nash until he hit the outskirts of town. He drove for another good half hour, then pulled into a roadside eating place with a motel off to the left. Uh, this looks like it. Yeah, yeah. Drive past. We'll swing back. Nash is going into the diner. We'll walk up. Attention, all units. I'm at a roadside diner. The stop a while motel near it. Suspect just went into diner. All units proceed with caution. A whole bunch might be in that motel. Mm-hmm. Hope the boys get here before things start popping. You said it. We can't go in. Hey, there's uh, Nash at the counter. See anyone else? Not from here. Let's walk over to the other side. Hey, Walt. What? Over there by the gas pump. Green sedan. You think it might be the robbery car? Uh, nobody in it. Look. Two guys coming out of the restroom. Yeah. And one of them, Tony Leggetti. Baxter's boys. I got a hunch Baxter's around. I got Tony's going in the diner. He's going in to pick up Nash. Probably going to take him for a ride. Let's take this guy before Lugetti comes out. He hears us. He's turning around. Police. He's going for a gun. <laughs> you knocked him cold. Nice tackle, Rick. Vassar, 28. Here's his gun. I'll dump him in the car. Here come some of the boys. I'll wave them off. You get in the back of the car. Okay, I'll get in with you. I wonder where Baxter is. Can you look out that back window without being seen? Yeah, yeah. Two more prowl cars pulled up. Mm, if the boys in the diner don't spot them. Nothing yet? No, no. Hey, here they come. We're getting a Nash? Yeah, holy cow, the whole bunch. Is Baxter with them? Yeah, and one, two, three, five others. They've spotted the cars. They're headed for this car. You go out that side, I'll go out this. You're boxed up, Baxter. Look out, Rick! Two of them. Two of them down. Baxter's heading around back. Rick, don't go after Malone, you crazy! Now he tells me. Stop, Baxter! You get him, Rick. Yeah, but just barely. That was my last shot. 
How was the dinner? Oh, if I'd eaten any more, I'd, uh, I'd need a new belt. <laughs> you gonna tell me what you did all day and why you were so late? Mm, went for a long walk in the park. Oh, that's what I love about you. Gone all day. Come in smelling like a shooting gallery until you tell me you went for a walk in the park. Oh, no. I get it. Yes? Oh, Rick, you gonna give me a routine or do you want to hear about Baxter? Oh, Harold Applenocker's tired. Let's have it. Well, get his dying in the hospital. Two of the other boys died on the way. The guy you tackled is singing all over the place and Baxter will have a quiet funeral tomorrow. The others we got locked up. Your boys all right? One of them got it in the leg. Otherwise, okay. You were right about the girl. Baxter killed her because he was afraid she'd talk. Seems she had a beef and walked out. Baxter got worried. Nash was to get his tonight, just like you figured. Okay, Walt, thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And thanks, Rick. Sure. Well? Well? Wanting to know if his boys were all right. Now, Rick, you've been doing something exciting, and I want to know about oh, it. honest, baby. The park's very dull uh, in the afternoon. Want to go stir up some action in it now? Good move. Rick, why don't you lie to me? Mm. Oh. All right, come on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're forgetting something. i got to sing a song first. Oh, Rick, now that you've brought it up, I want to go to the park. Well, this will only take a few seconds. You just pucker up and hold it. Well, 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 look who's here. I haven't seen you in many a year. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked the cake. Baked the cake, baked the cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked the cake. How'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do? Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band. Grandest band in the land. Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band. And spread the welcome mat for you Now I don't know where you came from Cause I don't know where you've been But it really doesn't matter Grab a chair and fill your platter And dig, dig, dig right in If I knew you were coming I'd have baked the cake Hired a band Goodness sake If I knew you were coming I'd have baked the cake How'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do Now I don't know where you came from Cause I don't know where you've been But it really doesn't matter Grab a chair and fill your platter And dig, dig, dig right in If I knew you were coming I'd have baked a cake Hired a band Goodness sake If I knew you were coming I'd have baked a cake How'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do Oh, how'd you do, how'd you do, how do you do Miles, still puckered? Mm-hmm Think you can hold it till we get to the park? Mm -hmm. You see, if you're patient, I always make it up to you. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Lieutenant Levinson was played by Ed Begley. Also in the cast were Virginia Del Valle and Wilms Herbert. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Tonight's show was written by Blake Edwards, and the entire production was under the direction of Jack Johnstone. Dick Powell currently may be seen in the motion picture version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Richard Diamond's Private Detective will next be heard two weeks from tonight. Check your local newspaper for the time of broadcast. Listen next week at this hour for Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, Soldier of Fortune. Remember, at this time next week, it's Dangerous Assignment on NBC. This is Eddie King inviting you to be with us two weeks from tonight when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. For all the family, try Father Knows Best tomorrow on NBC.